Uh, you already know who I am. This no. is Margot Berkey. <laughs> She's an artist and instructor and volunteer at Artworks, and she is down in the pottery studio for artist demonstrations during Gala Week. And I love demoing because I find that a lot of the times people don't exactly know what takes place um, on the potter's wheel. So generally I like to do something really large because then people can really see what's going on. But this may be uh, even out of my, uh, <laughs> my range. This is um, maybe eight pounds of clay. Normally, well, recently I should say, Recently, I've been using one pound blocks of clay to make mugs. So I have um, mugs over there that are about the size of what I've been doing lately. Um, those are for the holiday market. So it's been a really long time since I've done uh, work on the potter's wheel with a very large piece of clay. So I did ask Denise to wait for a few minutes to see if I was even going to be able to find center this. So it looks like we're going to be okay. We'll see. Um, centering to me is the most challenging part of the process because you have to put so much oomph behind it. And part of it is that you, you work on a continuum from power to finesse and from fast to slow. So at the very beginning, you're using so much muscle power and um, the wheel is going super fast, or as fast as it will go. And then by the time you're done with your project, your wheel is just creeping along and you're using your fingertips. So it is a continuum of uh, power and, you can turn that there, um, power and finesse. So it's a bounce. So right now, I have more or less mashed this into place. It's almost centered. And the thing about starting a piece of pottery on the potter's wheels, it has to be dead center. Because everything you do beyond that, um, well, it would exacerbate any little wobble. So you may think it's centered, but then you get your piece well underway and you go, oh, it wasn't. So. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. <laughs> yes. Um, when I teach, when I teach my pottery classes, my wheel work classes, for the first couple of weeks, I do center for my students. Because I discovered after years of teaching that students were spending so much time trying to center their clay and they weren't getting the experience of creating. So now I center the work for them first, or center the clay for them. They learn what it feels like to um, pull up a piece and finish it. And then the third week, I really say, okay, you're on your own now, we're gonna work on centering. So, Let's see what I can do with this. Now, as you can see, the wheel is going real fast. I'm pushing with basically my whole body. And not only does it have to be centered on the sides, it has to be level flat on the top. So you can see now that this is, there's no obvious movement here. I will just mash it a little bit. I don't need to go to the gym. <laughs> I don't need to work out. <laughs> All right, now let's see what we can do. I'm kind of excited. I want to make a big, like, urn. So, we'll see where this goes. Now, the next thing I'm going to do after I have established that this is centered is I'm going to drop the hole down. And this is just the middle of the piece. Okay, and I wanna be sure that I don't 
uh, go too far down because then I end up with a flower pot. So I try and leave about mm, three quarters, half inch of clay at the bottom. And that way um, there's still a base. Now after I've established the center, I'm going to open this up. So I'm going to put my hands in here and I'm going to pull towards me very firmly but somewhat gradually. And you can see that this is opening up. And so you see the hole in the middle is bigger. And I'm going to keep doing this until it's the diameter I want on the inside. And that might be good. All right, now I'm going to kind of flatten everything out, make sure it's still centered. Because sometimes in that initial uh, phase, your piece will get knocked off center. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run my hands back and forth on the inside. And this is just compacting the clay at the base of my piece. Um, if you look at clay under a microscope, you would see that it's basically flat particles. And so when you're pressing on the sides, the reason clay sticks together is the particles do this. It's not like chunks of sand that have sides. So in order for the bottom to be strong, I need to press down on it so that those clay particles are compacted. There we go. All right, now comes the fun part. Gradually, I'm going to be pushing my hands together here and pulling the clay up. I'm not going to be just squishing it. I'm actually going to be grabbing like a roll of clay and carrying it up with me. So you'll want to look right here at 3 o'clock. I'm going to put in a bit of an indentation in here so I have something to grab onto. And I'm just going to grab that clay and bring it up. What I want to be sure is I'm not folding it over on the inside here. So I'm going to kind of work that in. All right. And again. I'm going to make an indentation there at the bottom and then I'm going to get underneath that clay and slowly but surely I'm bringing that up. Can you see that moving now? Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to, every time I pull, I'm going to make sure I'm recentering so that it's not getting out of center. Again, putting that indentation in so I can grab the clay. And I'm going to really reef on this now. When I get to the top, I'm going to let go. And what I want to do is keep centrifugal force from opening this out too wide, or I won't be able to get a narrow neck like an urn. So I'm just pushing in, kind of bringing that top in a bit. Come on, let's cooperate. Feel an air bubble there. All right. Again, the indentation. What I'm going to do is cut off that top edge just a tip. I think there's an air bubble in here. The really wonderful thing about working in clay is it's, to me, the most recyclable art supply because 
if you're working in watercolor or paint, if you have a disaster or go, go south, um, you don't have any recourse, really, unless you make collages or something. But clay, until it's fired, you can always recycle it. All right, here we go again. This is a really large piece of clay, so I'm having to do a lot of pulling. If I was making a mug and I was working in a pound of clay, the mug would already be done. But it's harder to pull up such a large piece. Now I want to be sure I'm bringing this in. If it gets too wide, I won't be able to make a nice snack on it. So. Also, when I neck it in that way, I'm compacting the clay and I can pull it up taller. We're making some progress. Uh, also what's happening here, this was a very stiff piece of clay and now I've incorporated a lot of water into the clay itself. So it's becoming easier to work with because it's softer, which then becomes a negative thing also because after a while the clay will be too soft to hold its shape. So it's kind of a balance of working it as quickly as you can to keep it from getting too soft. Okay, here we go. Wow, it's really gonna be big, isn't it? I hope so. It doesn't fall apart. Oh, we hope. <laughs> There's always that chance. I have some big pieces over there. Yeah, I the, think I'm going to show some of them. Yeah, because I'm just going to fiddle here for a minute. Um, the one with the shelf on it probably was five or so centimeters of clay. And then that urn that's not gla glazed yet, the one, um, that one, that one was a pretty big piece of clay. So basically, everything starts out as either a cylinder or a bowl, and... Which you know, one's harder to do, a cylinder or a bowl? Oh, I would have to say the cylinder, because a lot can go wrong. So this is happening at Artworks right now. You've got until two o'clock today to come down and see Margot downstairs in the Creative Education Center at Artworks, 106 North Michigan Avenue, Big Rapids, Michigan.